Sean, I think we're going to start off right away. Well, it's amazing for us to see like 2,000 people tuning in on a Saturday afternoon. So today's topic is going to be very interesting. It's not going to be about real estate, even though we are the Singapore largest listed real estate company. It might be contradictory to what people, uh, public's perception about us, Propnex is a real estate company. But today we're going to share something a bit different. The speaker today is none other than our CEO, Mr. Ismail Gafour. He's also the chairman of Propnex Limited, the Singapore uh, listed company. Investor, entrepreneur, recipient of multiple award, inclu including the spirit of enterprise. Is he is known to be the advocate for training and lifelong learning. Institutionalize a vigorous training program in the company itself. Very, very structured. So all our salesperson go through many hours of training. More importantly, is that it's quality training, structured to build them from zero, slowly to intermediate to advanced level to serve all needs of consumer today. So today what he's going to share, this book is very interesting. It's called A Timeless Gift, Your Optimal Guide to a Meaningful Life. I think uh, in our course of our business, we help our customer accumulate wealth or fulfill their life purposes. Life, there is to be a meaning over there. So I think today he's going to share some secrets in his own opinion and pers perspective because why in our trade, we meet a lot of people. So we see a lot of different facets of life. So not to horn everyone a bit more uh, too long, CEO, sir, over to you. Thank you so much. Really, really appreciate that. I'm not so sure. I'm also a bit nervous. I think I just spoke uh, probably two days ago, more than 3,200 participants locked in for my consumer seminar. And thank you so much for the more than 2,000 of you have already locked in. And I, in fact, received my personal WhatsApp messages. Some of you are with their children at the um, TV in front of your TV screen. How I wish I can deliver on all of you. Please keep yourself as comfortable as possible. Anything you want, and let me try to switch over to the my screen. Yeah. Yes. Good. Um, what am I going to uh, share with you for the next an hour? Probably an hour, unless of course it goes a little bit more than maybe slightly more. I want to give you a huge assurance to each and every one of you who are there spending the next one hour with me. Yeah. Um, first and foremost, um, once again, I just want to say thank you again. And if you ask me, uh, again, one more thing before I start, if you've got any of the other people, it is not meant for seven year old kid, this program, even though I said in my video, anyone who's seven years, please come and join. Hi, all the children. How are y'all feeling? I'm quite sure y'all can't go out of home, but it's okay. Please uh, hear me. You want to call me Uncle Ismail, and it's very easy to remember my name. And I'm so blessed because when I was born, my mom and dad had a very huge task of naming me. And when I came out to this world, and I normally babies cry, right? But you know what I did? I smile. So that's why and I ended up, my name being is Smile, Smile. And I feel so blessed. Okay, I mean, that's in a very, um, what do I say? Uh, not really a joke as per a joke, but having said that, and especially even those of you are 20 years, 40 years, 50 years, you have to be just patient because I'm trying to go and build up and I'm really going to narrate a story. And at the end of the day, as I promise you, each and every one of you, there will be a QR code where you can scan and download the e-version of the book. Okay. Then what is the objective of this session? As, I, as Eddie has mentioned, it has got nothing to do about real estate, but there are nuggets of values from investment perspective as well. My objective is really very simple, to spread unconditional love and values, not only to all of you who are listening, to the next generation of people. And that's really important. When I talk about this book, The Timeless Gift, with, that you can see on the screen. Uh, this book is something that I wrote together with some of people who assisted me in conceptualizing, and I've acknowledged them in that book. When you download the ebook, you will see some of the names and so on. In year 2011, 2011 yes, it's coming to 10 years. And I printed a reprint a couple of times because it was really sold out. And right now you can't get the hard copies, but the hard copy is really beautiful because it is really a thick uh, border with a hard cover and so on. But actually, you know, 
my desire is not about selling books, but it was a desire for me to just spread some concept by trademark, and I'm going to share with you. Okay, but before I start all these things into the book, and I'm going to share a little bit about myself, and I just want to ask your humble opinion and request uh, that when I talk about myself, it was not about to impress to you that I'm so good, I'm clever, and I'm I'm the best. No, it was never meant to be. Uh, or regardless of your age, either you're 20 or 40, whoever you are, all I want to say here is this. My success is not about me. Believe me. I always felt that I've been guided. And I'm always thankful. And my success, I completely attribute to the Almighty Lord, the grace, and all other things that he put together, who, who I am. It is not me, it's without him. And having said that, obviously my parents who gave me the values when I was young, my family who showered all the unconditional love and support all through good times and bad times. And obviously my people, my partners, my connections, my friends, and the 2,000 over of you right now, it almost exceeded 2,500 of you. And if I just visualize it, and some of you are getting your, all your children and your family to look hear me and probably could be a good 10,000 of you. And I'm thankful. So most important, it is not about me. It is about understanding life priorities. Then the next question here is this. Last question, before I go on to the next slide. Why do I decided to share this? You know, the COVID circuit breaker has really restricted many of us. In fact, all of us. And we are really, really curtailed. But I think how else on a Saturday as a family part of the bonding can understand some of these concepts. Okay, let me go on. Wow, isn't he cute? Hey, any resemblance? Actually, for, for those of you who can see the photo and as well as my current face, you know, you know why I got this uh, hair and my baldness? Because when I was born, I apparently, I, as a baby, I was like that. I think I only had front, only the rest all thinning. Okay, not just joking again, but one of the key thing here is this, when I was uh, very, very um, young, uh, young self and of myself, and I must again say, I was a very, very happy boy. Can you see, you realize it, even probably the photo on the right hand side, yeah, uh, whatever condition it is, you always see me, my mouth open, yeah, but that was a smile, a smile, yep. So, and I also will say that I just uh, grew up in a neighborhood school, Tiong Baru Secondary School. And for many of you would even be surprised to know that actually uh, I only had O levels before I went into the army. But one of the key things about me here is this, I always stand up and talk from young. And, and again, I feel blessed. And that's really that's something that the foundations, my teachers, the educators, and whoever who gave it to me, I was confident to speak. And today I would like to share Again, it is a gift, I think, that I'm able to share with all of you. And as a 16-year-old boy, I must say I was very fortunate to win as a first prize winner for the oratorical contest among the secondary school. And you know, a boy from a yeah, neighborhood, Tiongbaru Secondary School, and came in as a champion. And within the South Zone schools, there were Anderson and there were Crescent Girls and many other schools. Obviously, my principal was so proud Hey, who's this boy? Yeah, but I was just a, an ordinary person. Okay, let me go on to something more interesting. Huh, where am I? Would anybody would be able to guess? If you look at this picture, I'm not really so sure. That's my, my mom and my dad. And I must say, I'm so, so thankful. I feel so blessed. My dad, you see the handsome man? Yep, he is 95 years old. And this picture was in 1968. And I was born in 1963. So now at, at that time, I was five years old. Where am I exactly, if anybody you guess? I am to my mom on her left. That means the second last person when you are looking at the screen from the right. Yep, that's me. And then the others are my elder brothers and my siblings. For those of you, prop connections, and I'm going to share with you something shocking. You, you see one adorable girl looks like a girl my, on my dad's lap, uh, probably Nizam will kill me. Actually, it's a girl, right? No, it is not. It's my youngest brother, Nizam. Okay, for those of you who know Nizam, probably Nizam is there too. You know, my mom, 
I think some of the, the, the core values of never give up come from, from the early days. You see, my mom and dad, first was a boy, second was a boy, third was myself a boy, fourth was a boy, the fourth boy who's Bruhan, who's not here, he's in New York, he's Singapore's ambassador to New York, he's stationed there, he was not here because he was in India there. Fifth was again a boy, and this time was Nizam, and my mom wanted a girl. So what she did, she dressed my youngest brother Nizam to a girl dress and so on. Fortunately, Nizam turned out right, straight. God bless. Okay? But you see, my parents never give up. What they did, they had the sixth try. And then finally, the family had a girl. And that was my sister. Okay? So she's not in this picture because she was not even born at this time. She was born in 19, early 70s. Okay, so this is all about my family, just to let you know. So we grew up in such a humble background. You know, where we, where we live, is, is, it is known as a $20 rental home. It is just one room, one hall space, and all five brothers, we sleep like sardine, and just bring out the mattresses, the small thin thin mattresses, and all of us sleep together, and the next day we will all just uh, fall and get ready. But some of you have known my story, you would have also known that my dad was an immigrant, very hard life. And my dad was also a news vendor. So all the five boys, we wake up at 4 a.m. every single day to deliver newspapers. For some of you, you are at home, you're receiving your papers. For those of you still buying, there will be one young man or young boy who come and deliver in, let's say, if you talk about 40, 50 years ago, we were the boys. And you know, my father, because he had five boys, he had free labor. So we were hardened from young. So I want to thank my dad. Uh, he has given me very strong discipline and my mom for showing all the love. And that's how it's all about my little childhood and my family. I'm going to go into a little bit more. I'm going to be really fast forward the screen because I want to go into the gist of today's topic, which is timeless gift. Let me show it to you. Therefore, I, if, you rem if you heard me right, I only had four levels. When I went into the army, then how did I manage to grow the company and had all that exposure and experience is simply because I had to work so much harder, pedal, because I only took my A-levels as a private candidate and I did my degree again as an adult learning and all of this happened very much on the later part of the life cycle. So this was in a constant struggle. But having said that all, Okay, let me move on to the next slide. Just give me a moment now. Okay. Hmm, what does this slide show actually? Actually, if you look at it in this slide, basically, for all that I said that um, didn't even go to a local university, but I did study in, uh, eventually I got a degree from University of Sydney, but in year 2010, I was invited. If you look at me, then with my motor hat, I think I've never had this experience. And there were all the various chancellors of the dean of the school and things like uh, things, uh, people who are very highly regarded academically, who runs the education system, uh, is from Singapore Institute of Management Competition Ceremony. I was invited as a guest of honor for the graduates of probably a few hundred students, including some of the top students who were getting the award and I given a simple speech. And then you do feel how, how proud I was, simply because I think education is key and it's one way is to give back to society. Okay, well, this up again very briefly in 2004, um, the person who's in between um, Minister Giorgio and myself is none other than my beautiful wife. Okay, 2004. I won as the Singapore Malay Chamber of Commerce Entrepreneur of the Year. And that was for us when we started the early days of our real estate business. Then in 2008, some of you recognize this very wonderful gentleman who's just holding my arms, none other than our president, S.R. Nathan. And in 2008, I won as the entrepreneur of the year but right now in the category being an Indian. I'm so blessed you see I'm an Indian Muslim so I qualified to get an award under, as a Malay entrepreneur then I got it as an Indian entrepreneur then I said hey am I why only Malay and Indian? Then finally in 2008 I was given 
as the entrepreneur of the year of the small and medium enterprises in Singapore, which again, which put together of all races, whether you're Malay, Indian or Chinese and so on. And, and these are all some of my little achievements. Yes, in 2013, the company was awarded as a People's Centric Award, uh, Corporate Award, and it's another milestone. And, and subsequently, I think 2013, I got some uh, public administration medal. Uh, again, at that time, was the president was uh, Tony Tan, who just awarded, and this was another event. And my dad, my dad, my dad, my dad, my dad is really, really proud of all some of my little achievements. Then came 2015. And this is where there was another very big award, which was known as SOE Next Year Award. Okay, by the time now some of the children and some of you say, hey, come on, Uncle Ismail, what are you talking about? All your story. Oh, my mom and dad asked me to listen and you're talking about your own glory. No, 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 please. I'm just going to, uh, very quickly going to go on. I'm just going to say, you know why am I sharing this? Simply, my message is simple. Every one of us can be successful. All of you who are hearing that, you can be a star, you can be a champion, you can be an entrepreneur, you can achieve many of your dreams. Okay, so that's the key message. And finally, this is the second last slide about a little bit about myself before I go into the actual proper of the topic. In 2018, PropNex as a company, we were listed in the main board and, and there was a very big happy moment because it is truly not about me, it's a group of people collectively, my management team, my PropNext team leaders, project leaders, my 8,500 salespeople, who every one of us work hand in hand together to bring the company, and today this company is not only owned by us, but also public, okay? So that, that little story. These are all our people and pillars, the management team, and all the champion agents and the leaders. And just to briefly tell you, why am I trying to show all the earlier slides? Because my success is all not about me. I have to repeat this many a time because truly, truly, okay, it's about the people who are all here throughout to help us go through and sail through. Okay, now, finally, I think I've got a very good next 30 minutes. All of you, I just want to say, please listen as much as possible. And especially for those of you who are younger, you can even take a piece of paper to take down some of the key pointers because eventually when you download the book, it is good for you to read again. Okay, so what is this whole book on the timeless gate is all about? Okay, it is a story about Andrew, a boy and a old wise man. Okay, I will tell the story shortly. But before I go to the story, I need to tell the concept, a quadrant, the four quadrants, which I have trademarked it, which is known as the wisdoms of the life priorities. And that's what I'm going to share with you quickly, the next slide. Good. When you look at this, this is the concept. This is the quadrant, wisdom of life priorities in four quadrants. Put it this way, for those of us who are now 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, you see at one moment, we were all kids in elementary schools and so on. If we just during this COVID, circuit breaker if we just close our eyes and we just recollect back our childhood days our younger days but sometimes our life is all like a dream it all moves so fast somehow covid have allowed us to slow down so when you look at it this whole concept of the quadrant why it says here is this it is easier to look at life from a quadrant perspective because i've broken it to four quadrants Okay, and the quadrants are basically highlighting in terms of up to someone who's living up to age 480. Therefore, the first quadrant here is uh, up to 1 to 20. And then, okay, fine, fine. Okay, I just got a message to say maybe I have to slow down the pace. Good, thank you so much. Thanks for the host for giving me a feedback. So I'm talking, I'm toggling, I'm looking at the book, and I also get the message. Thanks, Eddie. Really appreciate that. Yeah, because I, sometimes I get very anxious. I get very at the edge of the seat. Okay, storytelling time. Relax. But I just want to highlight to you. Okay, good. So the wisdom of life priorities. When I created this concept, what am I trying to say here is this. Any one of us can live up to age 80. And if we live beyond that, we feel blessed. Like my dad is 95 and he occasionally stays with me and he also has his own place. And if we are 
not lucky to live up to age 80, we accept that. That is the almighty's decision. But again, when you look at it from the various quadrant, from one to 20 years, 20 to 40 years, 40 to 60 years, 60 to 80 years, for right now, close to 3,000 of you who have locked in, including the children, I want you to identify which quadrant do you belong? Are you in the first quadrant, which is shaded green? Are you in the second quadrant? And finally, eight, okay? As long as we live our life up to beyond 60, all of us will go through the quadrant. It's only that some of us who have already passed the green and the blue. So what is this quadrant concept is all about? Let's, let, let, let's look at it, the next slide. Good. So I'm just going to focus on the green quadrant, which is the first 20 years. So in this quadrant, the key purpose, in my view, is to fill these years with fruitful education and right values. And believe me, if we have the right education and the values, this will set the foundation for the rest of our life's successes in quadrant two, three, and four. Later, when I tell a story about the chosen one, the boy whose name is Andrew, I will relate it through these four, four quadrant. And that's why I'm trying to uh, stress upon. Okay, I also said, it is all not meant to be say that from first 20 years, it's all about study, 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 no point. Because if you study every single day and you become a top student, but if you don't have the right values, if you do not respect elders, if you do not take care of people who are of in need, and if you only think all about yourself, and therefore you may not grow up as the best adult. Therefore, the first 20 years in my thing here is this, I've uh, put it in bold, number one is education, and equally important is right values. And there's the reasons behind it. When I tell the story, then you will realize that. Okay, foundation, yes, is for the rest. I mean, when you fritter it away, and the rest of the quadrant, one will harder. Put it, can I ask all those people who are listening right now there? Hi, for those of you who are listening there who are just 13 years, 14 years, 15 years. Imagine if you don't have a very strong education, how are you going to get a good job? And if you don't have a good job, can I just ask a question? Will a doctor marry a cleaner? Not likely, right? Maybe a doctor marry a nurse because they are all in the same working environment. Yeah. But what am I trying to say here is if you want a happier life, you know, when we are young, we want to be princess, we want to be prince, we have a dream castle, we want to have a happy life. But if you want to achieve many more things, then I think the first 20 years, we must focus on the right thing, which is knowledge, skills, and as well as values. Okay, let's move on to the next quadrant. I'm actually moving a bit fast. You'd be surprised. Maybe we can finish it just before one hour. Okay, stay focused. Second quadrant. What is this quadrant is all about? Actually, this quadrant is the one of the most challenging, I will say. Why? 21 to 40 years, many things happen. We get married for many of us. Some of us may not. Yep, we start a family. Some of us may not, but we may choose to have children. We start a career, which means you want to work and you want to rise the ladder in your whichever job that you're working. And you also want to invest. You also need to buy a house. You need a roof. So many things. So you see, if you look at it in the second quarter, there's so many things that is happening. But I just want to focus one thing. Invest your time and money in your career. Investment and family as life's top priority. It's always about family. But other than family, later part in the story when I share, you will have a very clear message. What am I trying to explain? You see, when you're 20 to 40, the bank loves you. 
people can able to give you more loan. And I'm not talking about you only having to buy property, but especially if you want to buy properties, if you're 20 to 40, you can stretch a longer loan. You can make mistakes. You can buy early sell and okay, fine. I'm not going to talk about property. I already promise you. But you can also always invest in bond, in shares, in whatever it is. So investing. So that is a key thing that we wanted to focus on second quarter. But what is one of the most challenging thing in the second quarter? Because you're 21, suddenly all of us have our freedom because one to 20 years or one to 16 years, one to 18 years, our parents always at the back say, do this, don't do that, you must do this. But once we pass the 21 or 22 and we, and we start to work, suddenly we realize we have all the full freedom. Freedom! Yeah, but what's the problem? Discipline. Why I say that? When we do not have the discipline in the quadrant of 20 to 40 years, a lot of our money will be wasted. And if we don't invest right at this quadrant, believe me, when it comes to the subsequent quadrant, there will be issues. And I will share with you very quickly as well. Let's very quickly move on to the third quadrant. What is this third quadrant is all about? From age 41 to 60, and I am in third quadrant. Am I happy? Very happy. Feel so blessed. But one of the key focus of the third quadrant is wealth creation and sharing the joy with our loved ones. Exactly, you know, my friends, and every one of you are listening, put it this way. I am 56 years old this year. Exactly, in fact, heading towards the fourth quadrant. But you see, if you look at it, what have I exactly put in the center? Wealth creation and sharing the joy with loved ones. My, I told you, my dad is 95. My mom is also equally old. And what do they need? They need a lot of care, love, and medical attention and cost. Same thing, when I am now 56, my eldest daughter is going to be 22, and my younger twins are going to be 16. And you know, my elder girls study in London, and my younger children have their own whatever desires they want and education. So what am I trying to say? Does all this thing cost money? Yes. How are you going to have the money? Only when you invest right, then in this quadrant, you have enough saving to make a difference for your parents, for yourself, for your children, for your loved ones. Can you imagine at age 50, age 55, at age 60, you still don't have huge amount of savings we will have to struggle day after day and is that the right thing may not necessarily be the best choice but some of us may not have a choice but this is just for each of us to understand but having said that let's move on let's quickly look at it. the fourth quarter in rate but actually it's one of the most beautiful quadrant living life to the fullest with financial independence and what is the purpose? Relax and reap from all your hard work in the previous quadrant. Live the rest of your life, live the rest of your life to whatever freedom. Give back to society. Go and look towards the Almighty for some grace and guidance and whatever you desire to. From 60 to 80, if you are really working means because you want to work, because you want you want to just share your experience, not because you have to work. That's the difference. When I say you want to work means you are happy working. When you have to work means you don't like to work, but you got no choice. What do you want? Okay. So this is a very simple concept of the life priorities that I'm talking about. Um, wisdom. And broadly, let me very quickly go on to the next slide. Wow. I think we are moving fast. Now I'm going to start the story. Hi everyone, say hi. Good. And you can say hi to the guy, the boy who's in Andrew. Andrew, the chosen one. In fact, if you look at it, there are as many as 12 children. Though I choose to narrate a story for the next couple of minutes, Andrew, the chosen one, and this is all written in the book, including the earlier what is all in this particular book I'm talking about the timeless gift but even though when I talk to Andrew okay when I just keep sharing and those of the boys and the girls who are there that's why in this photo I've also placed 
many little girls and princesses and angels. Therefore, it doesn't matter if you are Muhammad out there, if you are a Mohan out there, if you are a Benjamin, or if you are a David, if you are a Jasmine, if you are an Angeline, it relates to anyone. This story is applicable to anyone and everyone. Okay, so let's hear. The story goes like this. About this young Andrew and this wise old man. Okay. Andrew, 14-year-old boy. He just got his results for his exam. He did not do well. He really did not do well. And he was so worried when the school bell rang, he was supposed to go back home. He was so worried that when he go back home, his parents are going to ask. Actually, he come from a reasonably good family. He have got tuition and whatever it is, but he did not do well. Then as he was walking along the street back home, he happened to meet this one wise old man holding on to a, a cane, a walking stick. And this old man approached Andrew and asked Andrew, Andrew, he never said Andrew. He said, hi, young man. I am lost by direction. I am intending to go to Marigold Street, but I can't find my way. Andrew straight away looked at the old man and said, hi, uncle. I am going to my house and I will pass Marigold and I will show you the way. Actually, Andrew is not staying at Marigold but he decided to help the wise old man to show him the place. You, you ask your, yourself a question. Why is Andrew doing this? In fact, he did badly for his exam results. He is going back home with his head, is all worried about what spanking he's going to get. And yet, when this wise old man asked for direction, Andrew said, no worries. Even though it is not his way, he still wanted to help. This is what I mentioned, if you remember, the first quadrant. Even if one is not so good at the education, Andrew had the right values. He respect elderly people. He really respect all people, not only elderly people. And that's why he decides to guide and help this old man. So as they were crossing the road, the wise old man turned to Andrew and he asked Andrew, and he said this to Andrew, Hi, Andrew, I understand you had a lousy day today and you didn't do well for your exams. Andrew was shocked. Look at him. Hey, who is this guy? How come he knows my name? I never introduced myself. I only call him uncle. And how did this old man know my name? And then he started to be worried. The wise old man smiled at Andrew and said, don't be worried. I've got mystic powers. Actually, I know what is happening. Yep, I'm not a ghost. I'm just a old man, not as strong as you. Then the old man told Andrew, do you want to know more about life? He said, okay. Andrew was thinking, after all, I'm going to have a bad day. I go back home early also, nothing is going to make a difference. The old man said, let me show you some of a life priorities. And maybe I want to show you some good friends that you have never met. Andrew said, why not? Let me take this as a challenge and go and really go and have a feel of it. So as I said, the old man has got mystic powers. All he need to do here is this, is take his walking stick and he just go in circle and you know, when he tap on the shoulder of Andrew, they can just disappear time travel. Yep. Where did they travel? They travel and they met the destination is to meet this young boy by the name of Dean. Okay, 
So you don't need to read what is written on, on the screen, but I'm going to tell you the story because I didn't put all the little details. So what happened here is this, the old wise man and Andrew travel time and they met this young boy who was 12 years old and his name was Dean. Okay. And, but others cannot see him because they are mysterious. Okay. Uh, nobody can see that. So when Andrew looked at Dean, Dean was so happy. He was always on the phone, playing games, doing prank, uh, chasing around people. Then after school, his shirts were not tucked in. He don't seem to care. So basically, as far as you look at it, um, in Dean's mind, don't need to work hard. It's all about having fun. So he spent a lot of time not studying when he was 12 years and 13 years and so on. And he had a lot of fun. And then the old man, again, take the cane. I mean, I'm referring to the walking stick. He at Andrew's shoulder and they disappear. I mean, basically it's time travel. Now they're looking at a 20-year-old Dean. And that is the picture on the right hand side. Can you see this picture? Yes. So Dean really didn't study very well, but he was having a lot of fun, spending most a lot of time on his phone and arcade games and always talking to his friend and chatting and things like that and so on. By the time he was 20 years, they were at the beach and they had a lot of fun. He played beach, volleyball, he had few girlfriends, he got a drink and so on. Wow, what's so wow about it? The old wise man look at Andrew and asked him, how do you like to be Dean? And Andrew said, whoa, that's life. Hey, I don't need to be restricted. I can use the phone 24 seven. How I wish my parents allow me. And he says that, yeah, I want, I, I like Dean's life. Then the old wise man said, oh, really? Let me bring you to time zone when Dean was 33 year old. Again, same thing. He take the cane and he circle three times and he had the shoulder and both the old wise man and Andrew will be at the forlorn street where Dean, who's a 33-year-old guy, was selling newspapers. Okay? And then, Andrew will look at the old man. Why is this Dean look so haggard? He's 33 and what is he doing? Then the old man said, never mind. Let us follow Dean and see what is he doing. It was a little bit of a rainy day, so not many people bought the newspapers. He was just selling newspapers for some other people. And then he closed his, his small little outlet. He walked home. And Andrew and the old man is following behind Dean. But obviously Dean can't see him. So Dean went and ring the bell at his house. A young lady carrying a toddler opened the door and asked Dean, did you pour the milk powder? And Dean said with his head looking down, said, sorry, darling, I did not because today was a bad day. Not many papers were sold. I have got not have enough money to buy the milk powder for our children. And then the wife started to scream and shout at Dean. You are so irresponsible. How can you let our children... And, and Andrew was trying to look at into the house. The house was so small. It was so poorly lit light. And there was almost nothing. And there was another baby who was just crawling around. And there was another toddler. And all it goes to show here is this. Dean life was really tough in the second quadrant. And then the old man look at Andrew as Dean enters the house and the door was shut, the old man asked Andrew, do you want to be Dean? And Andrew said, no, no, no. But then the old man said, I thought earlier you said you like, you like Dean's life. He had all the fun. He was at the beach. He got everything. But I don't want to suffer my life, all these things. I don't want to be not have enough money. That old man said, never mind. Let's forget about Dean. Let us go and visit another of your friends. Maybe this guy will be better for you if you want to know him. And same thing, the old wise man took his walking stick and he wore around three times and hit Andrew's shoulder. And this is what happened. Hmm. 
they went to a new destination. This time, they are able to meet Peter. So again, what am I trying to say here is this. Don't, read, don't need to read the text because you hear me, you will get a better understanding. Again, Peter was, when they appeared, when Peter was about 12 years old boy, okay? Peter was in a, in a school environment and he was quite a studious guy. He wears specs and he really take all the notes and he's really focused on his studies. Even during, and then while they were at the school where Peter was, and but nobody can see Andrew and the old wise man. And when the recess bell rang, everybody go to the, the canteen to rush here and there. And Peter also went, he quickly take his um, um, sandwich and he went to the library. And then Andrew was looking at Peter. He said, wow, this guy is so disciplined. And this guy is really seems to be really putting in a lot of effort. And to tell the story short, what happened was Peter did very well. He was the top student in the class. He had very good education. Yep. And then Andrew was telling himself, maybe I should be like Peter because he's very, very disciplined. Not like me. I dare not even go home because my results were not good. I failed. This guy is a top student. Then what happened? Old wise man said, let us look at Peter maybe in the second quadrant. What was second quadrant? 20 to 40 years. Actually, if you look at it, at 33 years, Peter was a senior investment analyst of an investment firm. That means he make a lot of money. You know, analyst means people are bankers who give a lot of advice. You, therefore, you can look at it. He's driving a Porsche. He's so successful. He was a bachelor. And what was one of the problems? He was really a swinging bachelor and a free soul. Uh, he was actually the man about town because everybody wanted to know tips from him because they want to invest with a lot of boosts, sorry, dates, and all other things setting around him. Okay? Uh, and Peter is a good advisor to all his rich clients. So, and then Andrew was looking at old man. I want to be Peter. Peter seems to be good. First quadrant, he studied well. He's good. He's in the second quadrant. Even though he's young, he's so successful. He drives a sports car and everybody are listening to him. And he is really seems to be good. All wise men look at him. Well, let us look at Peter in the later years. Hmm. Peter at age 50. This is Peter at age 50. Age 50 is third quadrant. What actually happened? I'm just telling the story very short because in the book, you will lead you a little bit more details. Actually, what happened was, you know, Peter was advising everybody. Remember, I showed you one slice at the start. Second quadrant, one of the most difficult thing is to be disciplined. Because first 20 years, you are all constrained, restricted. Second 20 years, you have all the freedom. And when you, have, when you don't have discipline, what happened? As Peter was showing, a show off with all his car party, he did not invest right. Remember the second quarter is all about investment? He did not invest right. He started to be spendthrift. He tried to do, he tried to do contra for some of the younger children. You may not understand. Basically, he take a very aggressive, almost like gambling. And at age 40, Peter became a bankrupt. Bankrupt means he lose everything. He spent more than he earned, which means he, he got no more car, his Porsche was taken away, his job was gone. Because once you're a bankrupt, you can't get good job because people may not trust you. So he have to work all his way. So at age 50, when he still have to work and struggle just to earn a living so that he can make his ends meet. And then the old man look at Andrew and ask Andrew, hi Andrew, how? I thought you wanted to be Peter. He said, no, 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 I don't want to be Peter. Peter seems to have messed up. Then he said, okay, never mind. What about maybe I show you another of our friends? Maybe you will like it. Same thing, he, he takes his walking stick, he go around three circle and hit on Andrew's shoulder and they reach destination. Tom, this is the third person. So who have you spoken about? 
We have spoken about Dean in the first quadrant. We have spoken about Peter. And now finally is Tom. Same thing. Because the old man have got his mysterious powers or mystic powers and what he did, they time travel. Same thing when they time travel, they will look at Tom when he was 12 years old. Actually, Tom comes from a very good family, rich enough. And therefore, he come back from school, even at home, he do his homework. He was very, very dutiful in his task. And Andrew was looking at him, wow, this boy is, seems to be very disciplined. He goes to school, he come back from school, he still do his fair share of work, help in the house cleaning, and also helping his parents, and at the same time do his homework, and then he also had his fun. He said, wow, Tom is good. And then same thing, that was the first 20 years. Then the old man said, let us look at Tom in the second quadrant. Second quadrant was also an amazing thing. He became a very successful person and actually Tom was having a open house as they were celebrating the youngest daughter's birthday. So you look at his family, so he have got husband and wife and an elder boy and two girls and they were celebrating a birthday party. A lot of his friends, his partners, the children's friends all came. They live in a good landed homes and a lot of fun. Andrew and the old man was also there. Nobody can see them. But Andrew was looking at it. Wow, Tom is good. First 20 years, he did well. Second 20 years, he climbed up the ladder. He really invested. He became successful. He was an entrepreneur. And then he bought nice properties. And whole family is happy. Then the old man looked at Andrew. What do you think about Tom? I think I want to be Tom because he seems to have everything. He had a good childhood, he studied well, he got a good business, he had a good family, he had a good home, everybody respect. Then this is what happened. Hmm, at age 55, what happened? Why is Tom all lonely? When he got all the successes at age 50, 50, 51, 52, he spent less time with his family. He started going to karaoke and then there were many other people who were trying to take his money and he spent a lot of time drinking and he got to know a few other nice little girls out there and eventually, to cut the story short, the wife and him got into a lot of upset. The children, he don't talk to his children anymore and their marriage failed. He had a divorce. Yep, and they got separated. The three children went with the mother. So he was all alone. He lost a lot of his business. He lost a lot of his friends. He lost his three children. He lost his wife because they choose to disassociate with him because he became a drinker. He became a womanizer. He spent a lot of time on his own. Later, he was out of control. So 855, if you remember the third quadrant, this is the quadrant, regardless of our success, regardless of whatever we achieve, it is most important is to spend time with our family is to give back joy to our family. And this is what Tom failed. And that's why he was really miserable all himself. Then again, the old man looked at Andrew. What happened? And Andrew said, hey, wise man, you brought me, you saw the first person, Dean, you saw me, Peter, you saw me, Tom. And every time I think I want to be like Dean, but every time the end story don't seem to fit. Then this is what happened. So the old wise man again take the stick and went around three times and hit Andrew's shoulder and they went back to Andrew's school canteen where he was just came out of the school when he met the old man. They went back to the same place. And when they were sitting down there, nobody was in the canteen. Andrew said, hey, we are back into my same school. Then the old man said, this is what you wanted, right? Because Andrew, while going halfway through, said, I'm tired. Okay, you want to get, I, I bring you back. Then 
Andrew asks, what went wrong, all these three people? Is it because that is wrong to have fun? The old man said, no, every one of us should have fun. We cannot not have fun, but we must balance fun versus being focused in what we want to achieve. Put it this way, what happened to Dean? Because Dean had too much fun in the first quadrant. He never studied. He was always on the screen. He was wasting his time. He was at the arcade. He was with all the girls and things like that and never focused. And that's what he messed up. What happened to in the case of Peter? He was very good. But again, too much fun of party, not investing, and he became a bankrupt. So I think we must have fun a lot. We must balance it. Nobody says two-thirds or one-third. You can have more. It's up to you. But we must have a balanced approach. While the old man was explaining this quadrant about the ideal fun, the old man turned to Andrew and said, Hey, young man, I am really tired. Having brought you for the last one hour to show you all the different people. And then Andrew will protest. Hey, wise old man, you saw all the people were not successful. What were you trying to tell me? What should I do? Old man said, don't worry. You will get the answers. And the old man just vanished. Andrew was all by himself. Andrew was so worried. Was he dreaming? Was it something that was real? And then Andrew will realize as he walk, he will stumble and he will drop. And when he stand up in his arm, you see in my book, I put a ring. Actually, this is the quadrant ring. This was the ring that Andrew had in his hand. Actually, the old man left a ring, the quadrant, the four color ring on the palm of Andrew. So that when Andrew, Andrew realized it was not a dream, this is remembrance of the quadrant that one wise old man shared with him the last one hour. He went back home. He started to think, wow, what happened? Story short, let me go on to the next slide. Hmm. The next generation, the legacy continues. Andrew at age 60 at the lovely palm-lined beach in Fiji. You can see the dolphins and it's a beautiful beach. Andrew himself is now 70 years old. Can you imagine he was 14? 56 years later, Andrew was sitting by the beach on a lazy chair, enjoying the breeze and having fun, relaxing. Because what? The fourth quadrant is all about being independent financially. So he was relaxing. Actually, he went to the Fiji together with his grandchildren and his family to spend time. What actually happened? When he was on the lazy chair, just resting, suddenly someone hit his shoulder. He turned. And when he turned, he saw the same old man he saw 56 years ago. And when he turned, he said, Andrew was shocked. Exactly the same man. Andrew straight away stood up. He said, hey, wise man, you know you have been in my mind all these years, every time. You know, I've always been thinking about you. I even keeping the ring that you left behind. And the old wise man gave a smile, the same smile. He said, calm down, calm down, Andrew. Yes, I've been watching you. And I decided to just pay a visit. Andrew said, why now? Why not in the last 56 years? Then he said, no, I wanted to complete the story because I only showed you the three person. I want you to know who is the person who actually lived the life well and who's that person. So Andrew was asking, who's that person? Who's the person who lived life truly well? What it takes to live life truly well? And the old man will look at Andrew and as they share, Andrew will realize the person who lived life well in all the four quadrants was none other than Andrew himself. Because what he did, Andrew, after he learned this whole story, he, when he went 
bent back, he pulled up his socks, even though he failed his midterm exam, he started to focus, he wasn't no more playing prank, he did the first 20 years with the right values, he already had good values, and he focused on his study, so that he got good grades for his exam. Second quadrant, he did well, he started his business too, he became a successful businessman, and he had a nice family. And in the third quarter, his children were grown up. His children got married. He has grandchildren. And in age 70, he's living his life happily. And the old man said, congratulations, Andrew. You were the person who lived life well. And then Andrew was so thankful. He said, all oh, wise men, thank you so much to making a huge difference in my life. And without you telling me the story, I may not, I could have ended up like a dean or for that matter, a Tom or Peter. You were instrumental. I said, no, 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 no. It is your effort because you were disciplined. And the old wise man said, only people who are disciplined, only people who sat there with the right attitude, can achieve. Even though I shared, you had the discipline. Then the old man said, there's also another reason why I came here today, Andrew. Andrew, look at the old wise man. Why? Because you did not do something right. Really? I thought you said I did everything right. Yes, you did. But you are not doing something you're supposed to be doing right. And Andrew was puzzled. He looked at the old man and asked old man, hey, Please tell me, what is it at this age 70 I did not do right? And this is what the old man will point at. He will point at Simon. Who is Simon? Simon is Andrew's 13-year-old grandson at the same beach. And Simon is in his own world. Can you look at him? Which is a lot of teenagers today are like that. Headphone, when people call, they can't see. They are always on the iPad or on their handphone. Even on a, such a beautiful sunshine, even when the dolphins are jumping, they don't see what is happening around them. So the old wise man said, Hey, Andrew, 56 years ago, when you were 13 plus 14, I showed you the life priorities and the wisdom when I explained to you but I was waiting for you to start this. But Simon is in his own world and you are not sharing the same wisdom, life priorities and the four quadrant concept to your own grandson. And you should have said, thank you so much. I really wasn't focusing. In fact, I didn't even know I was the one who lived life well. And Andrew and the old wise man said, no worries. Congratulations once again. Zoom, he vanished. So we'll cut the story short, the legacy continues. Andrew called upon Simon and he narrated the whole story which I've been telling you for the last 40 minutes. So let us come to this. I'm almost coming to the end really, probably another five, 10 minutes before I take some questions, but I've got some interesting thing to tell you. Please hold on. I know now almost 2,700 families Thank you so much to each and every one of you. It means a lot to me because whatever the energy and whatever I share, I could have just shared this to 100 people. But if 2,700 and just now 2,800 times the multiples of your children, 10,000 of it, I feel so blessed. But let me just come to conclude this. Look at it, the wisdom of life priorities. What it mean by that? Again, before we conclude, the first 20 years is about having the right value. and do well. It's not about pure studying. It's also life skills. Life skills is also helping in the family work, helping your parents, getting to know what they are doing, being disciplined in whatever you do, finishing the task, and even when you drink a cup of water when you're young, to make sure that you wash and put it back. Everything's little, little, little discipline is what will make you a man and a woman with being responsible. That is all about the first 20 years. The second 20 years is all about investing, being disciplined, not to fall for the temptation. Third quadrant is about with the family, this giving to family, living life with joy and taking care of your parents at all times. Once you are in the fourth quadrant, you deserve to celebrate like Andrew. That's all I'm trying to say. 
let's move on. I'm going to share with you one or two next five minutes about a little bit of my family. And I want to share with you to all the adults who are listening. Before even I conclude, please, this what I shared is please don't walk away wrong that I'm just telling a story to seven years to 14 years. Actually, it is meant to even you are 20 to 40. Let's please revisit are we investing right? Put it this way. I told you at the start, for the first 20 years, I only had O levels. By right, people should get a degree or so, but I paddle harder. And that's how in the second quadrant, I got my degree. But then you have to have a career, you have to have a family, you have to run a business, you have your army and whatever I was doing, and yet I have to study. So it's never too late. So for those of you parents and for those young people, I think please really look at investing. And property investment is one of the good way that you can leverage, but this is not the seminar. Please listen to any of our other seminars. Okay, so this is something very important. So for those of you who are 40 and if you miss and you're not 45, can you invest? But of course you can. If you miss one quadrant, does not mean that is the end. We can always go back, but we have to work harder. Like for example, if you're going on a cycle, if you go very smoothly, you know, you pedal your cycle, at a good pace, you will finish your first quadrant. But if you think you miss something in the first quadrant, when you go to second quadrant, you must pedal harder. That means you must work harder so that you catch up. Same thing, if you miss something in the second quadrant, so you have to work harder. So all of us have an opportunity to catch up. So I do not want any one of you to think, oh, I don't have a good education. Oh, I didn't invest, right? Oh, I didn't save enough. Maybe I'm not good enough. No, we are the creator of the almighty. We are capable of anything. We are not dreamers. We are people who own it and we can achieve. And that is very important to each and every one of us. Okay, so let me go on to, and when I share some of the story of my family, please, I just very, very humbly want to request and say, I'm not saying that I have the best family in the world because every family have the challenges. I do have, we, I also don't want to say we are the role model. We have the same normal things in life. I do have them now little uh, argument and sometimes we lose our little temper and sometimes we have been a bit harsh on people among our own loved ones we take things for granted yep my children are like any other children they also sometimes will not put the cup after drinking at the plate but we constantly so it's all normal so my family is a normal family okay but having said that these are my my, my beautiful children and my wife and uh, these are some of the older pictures uh, my, I've got an elder girl, Norisha, yeah, and I also got a twins, Natasha and Norris, and they're very happy people, okay? What I want to say here is this, all family, we all need to take care of each other at all times, but I also think we have to be disciplined and must have routines, yes, okay, why am I showing this? For those of you who follow my Facebook would have seen many of these things. And I, just to say, if any one of you who really still want to suddenly, after looking at it, you want to follow my Facebook, my private Facebook is I already maxed out the 5,000, but I've got a Facebook page, Ismail Gafor Dash Prop Next. Uh, if you want to like my page, if you want, because I used to post all these things I posted in my Facebook, okay? My IG, yes, you can always go to my IG, but sometimes at my age, I'm more in Facebook than IG, but I also do update my IG, but not as often as my Facebook. What am I, these are all these things that I took some of these activities in the last 11, 12 days when we were circuit breaker. So yes, we do exercise as a family together. Yeah, we wash our house and clean and we also clean our cars and so on because to, just to let you all know, I don't have a maid. We stay in the landed property. I won't say huge, a reasonable size, but we choose not to have a maid ever since my children were probably 10, 11 years. Because I felt, it's not that we can't afford, I think we can afford to have a maid, but if I have a maid, then who's going to wash the toilet? Who's going to iron the clothing? Yeah, even when my mom and dad stay with me, he have a maid, but the maid cannot go to the second floor where my children are staying. The maid cannot go and wash their clothing or iron their clothing. But right now, the maid is not here because my dad chose to go and be in his place. So he once in a while, he come and stay because he always have his own room and so on. So we ourselves don't have a maid. So I'm not, I'm not saying to all the parents, don't be stressed. Uh, I think uh, a time will come when your children are grown up. I also had a maid. My, in fact, I had two maids when my children were all very young because twins we can't handle and all other things. So please don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to be a preacher saying, 
oh, I'm, no, 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 no. We need to have a maid at the time. Yes, please do. But all I'm trying to say here is this. The children must be given tasks, be responsible, because these are life skills, okay? So this is something that I'm... The another thing that I'm going to share, I think a lot of children now will be angry with me. I'm so sorry. I'm really, really sorry. All my young little darlings and my children who has been supporting Uncle Ismail for the last one hour listening and say, Daddy, don't follow what Uncle Ismail is sharing next. We don't like it, but I'm still going to share, okay? But I'm not going to insist. Ha, ah, what is this? Okay, I've done this. When I shifted to my new home, I asked my renovation contractor to do this central phone charging for iPad and iPhone or tray. You can just pull out, you can put four phones or five phones to just do a charging. It's in the common corridor next to my room. So I made it a discipline uh, just about two years ago that all my children, but obviously my big girl who's 22 years, she don't need to conform to that. I mean, once you go to 20 years, 21 years, you are an adult, you are responsible especially when children are young in their teenagers. So what we do here is this, at night at 10 o'clock, or if it is a weekend, next day can be up to 10.30, children can use their phone. 10.30, all phone, all gadget, all iPads must be put in the central charging point. Nothing goes to the room. This is very important. Why? Because these days, when we don't control this, sometimes our children don't even have a good sleep. You have cyberbullying and then somebody comments something and then they got disturbed in their sleep or they, even nobody's bullying. They're so excited about talking to chatting and each other and they probably end up sleeping at 12 and one we may not be aware. Actually, they're so concerned for their health. Next day, they have to wake up early, 6.30, 7. Okay, now they are not going to school, homeschooling. But again, if you see one of the most important things as child development is good sleep. They must have at least from 11 to 7 or at least a good 7 hours or whatever number of good hours of deep sleep. And one way is to take away all the gadget. Okay, but once they wake up in the morning, they can take, they can do. And they have to have a routine. They must do their own thing on the weekend, watch the... Okay, never mind. Stop, 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 stop. Smile. Don't bore. Don't get the children to hate Uncle Ismail for all the love they've been listening to you. I've done come to the conclusion. So what am I trying to say here is this. For all the parents, to all the adults, to everyone. Really, this is one of our sharing is to give love. Okay, this is one last request I have. I'm, I'm so happy after talking for almost one hour, 15 minutes, I still have got more than close to 2,700 of you still locked in. Do me a favor right now. If your children are next to you, you're looking at yourself, uh, watching all this. Take a photo with your family, okay? What else matters more than a family? And I want you to post this in all your, any of your social platform. If you're good at your IG or Snapchat or you're on Facebook and just say gratitude to my family. Hashtag PropMix. Ah, I forgot to say, maybe you can even put hashtag timeless gift so that you can remember. But actually, it's not. Actually, there isn't much. But hashtag PropMix. But this was our way of showing gratitude. My way of thanking each and everyone who are listening to all PropNections, to all the customers, and all my friends and relatives who locked in. Love you all so much. Yes. Okay. This is where you all been waiting for. Okay. I'm going to leave this screen for a moment. You can scan the QR code here for the free download on the Timeless Gift ebook. Because if you go and want to buy this book, as I told you, I, I had a first edition, I had a second edition, and, and all sold out. Right now, it's not available in any bookshop because you know I'm, I, I don't depend on making money out of this. But I did this is because I wanted to share this story that I, I came up with a story and I want as many people, and I'm so happy with because of this situation, we are all restricted. At least, I, I don't think I can talk to 10,000 people but now I could, okay, scan this QR code and then download it and then read it. If you want, you want to print it, if you want to give it as a story time because the book is very easily written. It only takes 45 minutes if you see, you see, so easy and there's some drawings and so on and things like that and so on. And if you start the book, you will finish it because I know some of your children who are not here. What? Anyway, this book is not meant for children. This book is to remind ourselves if you are in the second quadrant, are we doing the right thing as adult? If you are in the third quadrant, are we doing the right thing? Only as adult, when we do the right thing, you become a role model 
our children will follow us as they grow up and as they navigate the subsequent project. I hope all of you have managed to scan the QR code. Okay, good. I'm going to just wrap up in next. Part of our prop next gratitude and connecting with the consumers out there and all these are all those that for all public event. I mean, if this is next week's calendar, you have a fitness hour, you can always go in. We have other consumer webinar seminars, okay, about real estate, about buying properties in crisis. Most of you are interested. I'm not asking you to go everything, something. Those that are not circle, they are agents event. I mean, it's about real estate policies and about anti money laundering and so on because we want our agents to also well well uh, equip in terms of knowledge one of the key program i want to highlight here is this next saturday same time about 3 p.m where my cursor and i'm going to just show the next slide and i want every one of you to look at this program this is what is going to happen dr michael lee in fact last saturday he shared and i think almost a thousand of you locked in and i tell you he's an amazing doctor and for those of you in fact there is Prasad, yes, Dr. Prasad. In fact, today I happened to buy a business time and I saw an article written by Dr. Prasad, if I'm not mistaken, it's about throat cancer and all other things. And you have Dr. Daphne and uh, she is, as far as concerns, your eyes and all other things and so on. You know, Dr. Michael Lim is indeed an Asia Pacific president of the Heart Association. He's also, if I remember rightly, the vice president of the World heart association in fact he's an authority when it comes to heart and heart is in a vital organ they are really 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 on the very high standard of practice professional we are going to bring this seminar next saturday same time 3 p.m and all three doctors will talk but anchored by dr michael Lim and the other two doctors therefore take note speak to my salesperson you speak to my salesperson in fact, you can even straight away take note of the Zoom password at the webinar. You can take a screenshot of this thing and lock in. And I just, because the topic is how to live beyond 100 years. Dr. Michael Lim told me I will live 100 years because my dad is 95. Thank you so much, doctor. I hope really, I, it's not about living 100 years. I'd be happy to live above 80 years, but I want to live my life well. Okay, thank you so much for that. Okay, thank you so much. One hour, 20 minutes to each and every one of you who stayed throughout, I'm so happy. And I'm going to pass on to the host, Eddie. Thank you, Eddie, for making sure that you went so smoothly. I can answer some of the questions or queries, a couple of if people are interested. I see you, sir. So coming to the Q&A, we have a, should be an old friend, Mr. Augustine Tan, asking, in your journey, did you have any regrets in life and any things that you have done differently? I think obviously there have been challenges. Uh, I'm quite sure I've done one or two mistakes, uh, uh, either in an investment or it's in a life decision and so on. But the point to me here is this, it is never worth being regretting the mistakes. Mistakes, I take it as something that I want to learn from and I want to avoid moving forward. So given a choice, uh, I've got no regret, but maybe, I won't say regret. I wish that I would have been more focused in my first quadrant. Um, maybe I would have studied better. Maybe for if I have done well as a top student, probably I could have been a scholar. Maybe I would have been maybe a minister. I don't know. But is that all my wish? No, 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 no. I'm happy person. But what am I trying to say here is this. Uh, nobody tell me a story about life priorities and quadrant. So I just find my way. I'm happy, no regrets. Thank you so much for asking that question, Augustine. Hope we answered the question uh, to Mr. Gostin. From Mr. Matthew Tam, I mean, in, in, in view of this COVID-19 crisis, any life lessons that we can draw out of this period of time? I think definitely, hugely, hugely, hugely. You know, as much as my heart goes to every of either our Singaporean or the, our foreign workers who have made our country so beautiful, or for that matter, in the whole over the world, now it's almost coming to probably exceeded 2 million of those people who are COVID infected and so on. And, and, and one of the biggest lessons here is, and for me as well, actually, we were all running like a rat race in a world that is moving at such a fast pace 
that we have don't even have time to pause and even sink deeper, reflect ourselves. The COVID has given us an, a huge thing. Life is so precious. Sometimes we take a lot of things for granted. And in fact, even as this particular program, as Prognix came out and many other things, is we decided it's all about gratitude. Life is something that we should be thankful to the Almighty. And today, if I have all the energy, the sharing and the passion, and, and who gave it to me, it is not all about me. It is the Almighty, the Creator, and who has all the powers and as well, all the people who are around me. So one of the biggest lessons as far as COVID here is concerned, we all have to think out of the box. We have to have a new norms, even in the way that we want to do business. We all have to be more technology savvy. We have to be thankful for what we have. And let's become a stronger person moving forward uh, after the COVID is over. Okay, we answered two questions at once with that answer. Um, from Sharon Cheng, interesting, interesting. Because there's always the 80-20 rule. Because you showed your lifestyle, you don't maintain a maid. How did you manage your time? How do you maximize your time? You run such a big company, motivate thousands of agents and team leaders. How do you manage so many things? Plus an IPO listing without learning corporate finance and all other skills. How did you build everything from scratch? Okay, and um, uh, I'm sorry if I say that, if any one of you get offended or whatever it is. I always feel I'm the chosen one. When I say that, I say it with a huge amount of gratitude and in, in humble. I think I'm the chosen one that the Almighty give me a lot of direction. And He knows. The day when I don't do the right thing, He will make me nothing. He will remove everything from me. When I say the Almighty has chosen one, I think I'm born with a purpose. And the purpose is simple. To add value in the life of people who come into contact with me. Because he has chosen me, and my mission is to add value to the people who come into contact with me, he also gives me the energy. It is not about me. Honest truth, I don't take any singular supplement till day, not one. Maybe I should, because I'm not young. But who gives me the energy? The Almighty, based on the mission and the purpose that I'm assigned to do. And because of this energy, sometimes I'm just puzzled, you know, I, I have the energy and I'm focused. I have a balanced life and I try to do multiple things. But what I tend to do something here is this, I'm surrounded by good people. I don't know. Again, the Almighty has given me all these good people to be aligned with me. Therefore, they do a huge amount of work for me. Even as simple as my PA. My PA has been with me for the last 17 years. She does all the little things, but they're so important. Because when she does that, I'm free to focus on other things. So is my family. My wife don't question me whether I come back late, if I do work, if I do that. They give me the support. So does my children. So does my partners. So, I mean, it's all about people. So, to, sorry if I've been a bit long-winded and so on, but I just want to feel the gratitude. It is not about me. I get all the energy. So, what I do, and I think all of us can. Okay, if I want to give, because still more than 2,000 of you are locked in, I want to give you one special tip. Special, special tip. It was not even meant, planned for. Because 2,000 of you are still there. Okay? I think I always share this. One of the interesting way to get that energy here is this, and you want to get a job done, is OMG. Remember this acronym, O-M-G. What does OMG stands for? O stands for obsession. I'm a person who's obsessed in something that I want to do. Whether you want to bring the company to listing, whether you want to do good for your agents, whether you want to conduct a seminar, I'm obsessed. That means every one of us, if you want to achieve, be obsessed, okay? then you achieve things. What is M? Massive action. You can't just try little and hope it happen. You have to keep trying. Maybe it doesn't work this way. Massive action. So we do, you know, say you want to go from one destination to another. Even if there is a flood, if there is an accident, are you going to stop there and wait? You'll find another way because your objective massive. And finally, the third, guidance of grace. Because we are, after all, human. 
we can't achieve everything all by ourselves. So when we are lost, we need we need that quiet moment to ask for direction. So with that OMG obsession, massive action, and the guidance of the grace, we can achieve many things, and we have all the energy to do. I hope I answered that question. Eddie, are you there? Yep, I'm here. I'm looking at uh, all the questions. So looking through, um, just to answer everyone that if you can't get the QR code, not to worry, you can visit Promnext Facebook page. We posted the QR code on our Facebook. So every one of you can download it from a link on Promnext Singapore. Just search Promnext Singapore, you'll come to our Facebook page. Okay, coming back to the question, Elvin asked for, I mean, possibly in the second or third quadrant, how, many, how much percentage of income per month? Do you recommend them to set aside for investment? Okay, you're talking about the second or the third quadrant? Likely to be in the second quadrant. Okay, I no worries, no worries. I think, um, I must say, because second quadrant is one of the most difficult time because you have a family, you have a house, you have a commitment uh, and probably you start getting married and then you have your renovation and then you're going to have a baby. So huge amount, huge amount, huge amount. So, but put it this way. There are families who earn only $4,000 and they're so happy. The families who earn $10,000 who also feel not enough. The families who earn $30,000 is still struggle. So it is not about how much money that we have. It is how we manage our life and how much we allocate. I always think we always need whatever income, doesn't matter if it is $5,000 or $10,000. It is really, really important to save some cash for the rainy day. But I'm not going to give hugely what is a percentage because some of us in the second quarter may invest in a property. A property is an investment. When you buy a property or you buy a second property, you're already investing all your cash over there. So it's, there's no specific signs to it, what percentage. And because it also goes with your own income, what I would like to say here is this, try to cut waste. In fact, if the next week, if you're free, if you take a clean piece of paper, in, uh, to answer these questions, how much to save? Maybe one way to start is how much I can cut things that is not necessary that I'm spending now. And if you start to go and write all these things, probably you will straight away be able to save another couple of $200, $300. In, and, and then you can start saving. I think saving is important. Sorry, Alvin, I may not have given you an exact answer because I don't want to be giving, but I always say that regardless of every quadrant, we must have cash for rainy days and whatever other savings you must put. I, if you ask me, at least from your income, if you can set aside 20% would be good, but for not it may not be applicable for everyone. Sure, I think it's good. Wow, uh, affirmation from Sharon. Thank you for inspiring us. Looking at how you maintain your energy level is amazing. Okay, Augustine again. Mr. Ismail, can you share with us a succession plan for yourself and prop next? Goodness. Okay, I think uh, this is business, um, yeah. thing, but for sure, I'm so, so, so happy. I'm so happy you asked this question, but I'm not going to name. I've got an amazing team. You know, my host who has been there, he is 18 years younger than me. Yep. And I've got so many other people. I got my Lim Yong Hock, my KEO, nine years younger than me. I have my Calvin Fong, who's 12 years younger than me. I have my Josephine, my COO. I think she is a good um, 20 years younger than me or 19 years younger than me. So we have got a huge team of people who are aligned with the similar values of adding value in the life of others. Because we are so aligned, I think I'm really, really not worried about prop next succession because as a business, it has an, a continuity plan and I'm blessed because we have that. Uh, but I'm not going to name who, who, because I think we never know, but God gave me the energy and you will see me and I hope I look young enough to continue to run um, a bit more or long more. Yeah. Okay. I think Eddie, I think if there aren't many huge questions, yep, it's good. okay. I think what I want to do, because also in fairness to all the children and whoever it is, I really hope that those of you enjoy, uh, please put in your socials and you tag and then we just want to get this feedback. Uh, and you can always put your video or whatever sharing that you have and so on. We are happy. I forgot to show you one or two slides. Actually, you can go and like our Prop Next Facebook because if you like our Prop Next Facebook, usually we will have some updates and things like that. 
uh, as I said, for my own Facebook, uh, Ismail Gafor Dash Propnex is a page. If you like, maybe I can also post something over there. Stay connected, stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you so much once again to each and every one of you. And I see a panelist, Jessica, Young Hawk, Alvin Tan, Norris Lowe, Fast, and all other people. Yes, have an amazing day too. Thank you so much. God bless. Let's have a good weekend with our loved ones. Show gratitude to everyone. Bye. Thank you, Ron. Wishing everybody a good Saturday. Please head to PropNet Singapore Facebook page to download the ebook. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you, sir. Have a good day. Bye.